morning, everybody. Uh, thank you to the organizing uh, committee of Mount Sinai and Scientific American. I'm Yvonne Chi, and I direct digital health at the Icon Institute here at Mount Sinai. And uh, thank you for the honor to share our asthma mobile health uh, study experience. First, I want to acknowledge our world-class technology and academic partners that really enabled uh, the successful design and execution of this mobile health study, which uh, was conducted in its entirety using a smartphone. So to be more specific, uh, we were able to recruit 10,000 participants from three different countries within an 18-month period. And uh, my study team and I have never uh, physically come in contact with any of our participants. Uh, and that is the, the innovation uh, that I'm sharing with you today. I'm not sure if there are any researchers <laughs> in the audience. For those uh, that are in this space, you may have some pretty visceral reactions to these two images. Uh, this is what traditional research really looks like, the recruitment process. Um, it's quite tedious, um, time-consuming, resource-intensive, and at times uh, painful. <laughs> so um, how did our story begin? Well, um, March last year, Apple launched Research Kit, and we were one of the five original uh, launch partners, and the the idea uh, was uh, pretty extraordinary, is to bring clinical research, which really, uh, for various reasons, so many barriers inherent to the process that uh, it's not accessible to the masses. So what if we bring research to the masses, and uh, if you were to own a smartphone, in this particular case is an iPhone, I'm certainly platform agnostic, <laughs> um, but that you already have a very powerful research tool right there in your hands. And uh, think about the possibilities, the potential of uh, continual monitoring engagement since a lot of us, I myself, and uh, I admit I'm definitely a smartphone addict and it's literally on me all my waking hours uh, just to plant the seed there so you could start to imagine the possibilities as opposed to in traditional research, uh, the types of resources required to get a person into the whatever research coordinating center or doctor's office uh, to collect that one sliver of data. Okay. All right. So what we're proposing and have done is for those who got the news and are interested, just simply go to the app store and download the app. It's certainly free. And uh, within the app, I hate that picture. <laughs> Oh boy. Um, the idea is uh, there's a user-friendly multimedia approach that walks the participant through the various steps of uh, the required elements of informed consent. That, uh, and, and these rules are governed by international and national regulatory bodies. So there are critical elements that are uh, very important, such as the participant certainly needs to understand the risks, benefits, and options, and so on and so forth. Um, but w without belaboring the point, since uh, this conference is about uh, science, data, visualization, and the communication of the insights, uh, I'll you know focus on a few things uh, that may speak to that. Here are some dashboards. Um, that the participant will see. And uh, let's see, what do we have here? On the left, um, there are some GPS tagged environmental data that we could grab. Uh, and in asthma, as you can imagine, if the, uh, okay, ozone <laughs> is not uh, great that day, and if the person is particularly sus susceptible to the effects of such, uh, they have uh, on, 
on the spot uh, instantaneous information to help them. And of course, all this is collected real time continually so that we could do fairly advanced, uh, sophisticated uh, analytics, triangulating, say, patient reported symptoms, maybe their healthcare utilization, meaning ER visits and uh, doctor's visits, and, and so on and so forth, uh, as it relates to these potential triggers. Um, to the right, there's a plotting of uh, peak flow. I, I guess the parameters aren't particularly important. The, the idea is that, you know, uh, the, the participant has uh, on them at all times, uh, real-time feedback on how they're doing, and it could pull from devices. The the right middle um, bar area is the their step counts. So this just happens to be an iPhone, so you could pull health kit step count from that, or whatever you allow us to grab, uh, and uh, the technology is compatible, we could take all of that with your consent. Um, Here's uh, more on the left bottom, for instance, of course, to encourage uh, and offer positive reinforcement. And where over time we'll get even more sophisticated, but uh, to incorporate some gamification, earning badges and such for adherence to protocols and, and such. Uh, and above that is a, a map of uh, you know, where you're located and how the air quality is. On the right is a feature we call Dr. Dashboard. Now, there has been a lot of talk about how technology has really er eroded the physician-patient relationship. Um, I would argue that if done properly, certain technology technological features such as this could uh, actually enhance that relationship. We got this idea from our user feedback, so as um, the, the user or patient is uh, entering all this data, we could summarize it on one screen, all the most clinically relevant uh, information that the clinician would want to see during uh, such a visit. So uh, at a quick glance, uh, it could summarize without the patient having to recall. And we all know sometimes there could be some recall bias. And uh, this could facilitate uh, that very now crammed uh, doctor's visits so that uh, hopefully decisions could be made. And another thing that the participants have uh, told us is, I, I didn't even go through there, there's so many features within it, we have curated uh, educational videos about you know, medications, usage, and all, so on and so forth. And uh, throughout the process, the, the patients will come across certain ideas that you know never had occurred to them. The point is they've, they walk into these uh, visits being a more educated consumer and, uh, and uh, educated, empowered patient. So all these are um, big pluses. I, I really love this map for various reasons. It's just a reminder of the the tremendous potential of this technology. So to be specific, it, it enables almost like a research on steroids. Within three days of the launch, we had over 35,000 downloads of the app. And despite our very stringent uh, enrollment criteria, we were able to recruit, enroll uh, 3,000 participants. Again, for some who are not in this field, you may not quite understand what that means. Uh, I could recall a comparable asthma epidemiological study, which to reach that number would have taken years and God knows how much money and effort. So, so the rapid scaling is pretty tremendous. And the other very important thing about uh, this map that highlights is um, in traditional research, because the funding typically will go into to major academic centers such as Mount Sinai, your catchment area are usually limited uh, to, to these areas. But um, for our study, for instance, we are really location agnostic. We were recruited from UK, Ireland, and so on and so forth. So for our US participants, 90% were from outside the New York City 
uh, region. And that's really important because we have to recognize academic centers, the catchment areas, they're kind of comparable. And we're missing really the, the general uh, population that's much more representative of you know, what's out there. Our, our study, God willing, <laughs> will be published soon. So I'm limited in some of the um, research specific uh, results type um, data that I could show you, but hopefully this uh, does demonstrate uh, some of the uh, graphics, uh, bar plots. Uh, we have asthma trigger distribution curves and such. So um, it, it's, it's pretty nice to see. <laughs> Uh, how our science team, they're able to create these uh, wonderful, uh, very informative, but also lovely looking um, plots. Um, the last feature I want to show you is um, that we were able to pilot a, um, we were able to integrate really um, the, our app and our Mount Sinai electronic medical records. So this particular example, we're able to have our user enter uh, the peak flow. It doesn't matter what parameter it is, but it's something of interest and importance. You ask the participant to enter using their phone, and that gets pushed into uh, Mount Sinai uses EPIC. That's our EMR. And what happens here is then the clinician could um, preset thresholds in which he or she wants to be notified. For instance, if that particular parameter drops, indicating the patient is sick, then the doctor will be notified, okay? So that, that is kind of the, the concept here, and uh, then the clinician could plot. Uh, and so moving forward, this is a pilot um, situation, but the idea is moving forward with advanced analytics, the, the idea is to be able to capture uh, early deterioration of um, the patient so that they themselves are made aware and uh, the caring medical team is made aware to, to intervene earlier rather than later and uh, change the course of the outcome. All right, well, uh, I guess in summary, our, our study demonstrates the feasibility of conducting these types of uh, large-scale mobile health studies. And uh, I, I really think the potential is pretty tremendous. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to share this with you. Uh -huh.